This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 370 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. This is the first of our monthly Western Dressage episodes. We hope you enjoy. So we have something special for you this week on the Dressage Radio Show, and that's Dr. Wendy Ying of the Driving Radio Show. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Glenn. Thanks for having me on the Dressage Show. Well, you know, Reese and Philip take their one week a month off, mm-hmm. and we have a new segment that's going to be starting once a month, and I'm so excited about it because it's probably one of the hottest disciplines now going in the horse world and growing in the horse world, and that's Western Dressage. And you set this whole thing up. So thank you, Dr. Wendy, for all your efforts. Well, I'm so excited about Western dressage. I think it's really, really fun. I think, um, and you know, I got involved in Western dressage a little bit when my horses were at the end of their driving career. And it looked like something really fun for us to do together. Plus, fabulous hats. (laughs) <laughs> and a lot of bling. And you like bling. bling, yes. Yeah, that's encouraged. Well, before we get to our guests today, I just wanted to mention and give a congratulations out to Dressage Today magazine, who we work with here on a regular basis with Hillary. Dressage Today took a bunch of awards at the American Horse Publications last night. I was there all weekend and had a great time with all the journalists. As a rule, they drink a lot, by the way, Wendy. I, I didn't realize so that about equine journalists, but they're. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an open bar, but they uh, they took a lot of awards. They there. have to drink to have their creativity flow. Oh, that's right. Well, it was happen. flowing last night. Let me tell you, <laughs> uh, they uh, and you know they did a great job. Dressage today took probably ten awards. Yay! So, uh, congratulations. They did, a, they did a good job there at the awards last night. So congratulations to them, and we enjoy working with them on a regular basis. Also, from the driving world, uh, one of our sponsors, Driving Digest, uh, took this like the second largest award of the evening, oh. and it was her second time taking that award, and she was so excited. Oh, congratulations, Ann Pringle. That's fantastic. You know, she... It's driving digest. It's it's her and one one uh, art artist, right? And pretty much that's it. And she beat the Chronicle and Equus Magazine yeah. and all these biggies. So, and that's the second time. So that's a lot of hard work to do that on your own. So it kind of sounds like us just here in a microphone <laughs> doing our thing. Well, we're going to introduce our guest now. Do you want to? Why don't do you? you? Want me? Okay. Yeah. We have Karen Abatista and Tim Christensen, and they're from my area around Sarasota. And Tim um, is very involved with the AQHA horses, and Karen is a USDF uh, rider and judge. And they have uh, come together in a partnership to promote Western dressage, and they're here to tell us about the sport and a little bit about why it appeals to amateur adults like us. So welcome to the hi show, guys. guys. Hey, well, hi, Wendy. You. Hi, Glenn. Welcome to the show. Tim, tell us what is Western dressage. It, you know, it, people have probably heard a little bit about it, but it's growing like crazy. Oh, it's, it's, it's one of the fastest growing disciplines that there is, like you said earlier. Um, and the discipline itself, I kind of fell into it about, the, about a year and a half ago. I had heard about it, um, kind of started playing around with a little bit of the dressage, knew it was coming, and wound up going to a, a dressage, Western dressage show that they held in conjunction with a quarter horse show in January of 2015, and had a couple local friends come in and help me and give me a couple of lessons to get me acclimated to mm-hmm. the to the arena and right. to the test and all that kind of stuff. The geometry. The geometry, yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and that just kind of opened up the whole, the doors for me and just loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had a couple clients who kind of got... And you won. Let's say you won. That <laughs> yeah. kind of made it even more fun. It was That's way yes, more it fun. Did. Yes, it did. Yeah. It and always helps some... when you don't suck. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> and then we had a couple customers who they kind of liked it. They wanted to get involved. And before you knew it, we thought we would do a, a clinic. Um, started hosting some clinics and getting some information, mm-hmm. and it just exploded for us. Yeah. Um, just the enthusiasm and the excitement, and what we found is that it can bring everybody together. If you're a right. seasoned show person, or if you're just starting, just out. starting out, or if yeah. you're just even just like a trail rider, just it's someone who just enjoys their horses, yeah. it just helps you become a better horsemanship mm-hmm. person. It's very democratic. We're all inclusive. <laughs> yes, there you go. And I always like to joke around when we do the clinics. Um, I met Karen. 
about a year or so ago. Yeah, I think we started working together almost exactly yep. a year ago because we we met at the symposium up at Lynn's place that I yep. was doing, Lynn Palm's place. So and then the more we were around, I was around Karen, I'm thinking, you know, we think more alike and, and mm-hmm. just so one thing led to another. And so we started putting ourselves together, promoting clinics and... And shows. And shows. And they just took off. Yeah. Um, and people just, they just, it's so refreshing. They just love it. I know my um, wife has uh, showed uh, Western dressage now at Lynn Palm's place, and she had been an inventor in all English before. And what I was impressed with when I was there at the show is that half the people there were wearing English attire, half of them were wearing Western bling. It was, and it was a little bit of every kind of horse. It, it, it was really all inclusive. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It doesn't matter. We have gated horses. We have ponies. We have quarter horses, stock horses. We have English. There was. Horses. There was a couple of uh, almost drafty cross types there when we were there. Uh, just all, all everything. We even seen some of the the mules, show mules. Oh yeah, um, I remember oh, that. And there was so even one at the world show, and, and yes, and they've they've held their own. And so. I judged a lady um, in or- the Orlando area riding side saddle. Oh, yeah. Really? Western dressage side saddle. Oh my that God. Was a I want to do, do they have Western dressage side saddles? Yeah. Well, they do. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. one. Does it have a horn in the yeah. front? Yeah. No, I do. They have Western side saddles. Do like they? at the um, Rose Bowl parade, you see all the ladies with their. Oh, you are correct. Yes. Yes. Are they they're using tool. Western? Yeah, they're Western oh. saddles. I didn't with a know horn that. And everything. Yeah. I didn't know. That's fun. Uh, that's yeah. what I want to do. Yeah, so I always you like to joke when we do. Yeah. When we do the clinics with Karen and I, sometimes I'll joke and say, it's kind of like when East met West. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, she came from the traditional side and I came all the way from, you know, the, the AQHA Western, sh- side. Western show side, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. He's the cowboy, I'm the diva. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Although sometimes I'm yes. not sure Did about that. Did you have that. to go out and buy all blingy shirts and stuff now? I did. I it, had to buy a hat. And it was fun, wasn't it? I, it, it you got was. the bling up. It was, and, and the boots, and yeah, I'm, I'm kind of liking it. I haven't <laughs> quite, I don't have the leather chaps yet, but I'm working on it. I can it. see why this appeals to Wendy. Her, it allows yeah. a little more leeway for fashion. Yeah. Yes. But that's what makes it fun. I think that's what a lot of people like about it. I don't want to just wear like a black coat and a white shirt hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and no, you know what like we've noticed helmet. too is that the, the, the attire kind of comes from the background of the breed. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the show people, the paints and the quarter horses um, have the, the blingy show shirts and the show saddles because we don't need to go out and get special saddles. Right. We already have them. But also you get to go and you see some of the, Australian saddle. So I've oh, had to yeah. learn to look at things that were Western that I didn't even know were Western. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and, well, and you know, not show- all Western hats have beautiful creases like we have at the show world. <laughs> and you know. let us put a little note in for safety. USCF approved the helmets. Helmets, you can correct. Wear your helmet. That's not a problem ever. Well, now. We're going to take a break for a commercial, and then when we come back, I want to talk about what the differences are between Western dressage and English dressage. Is it run the same way? Are the tests similar? That kind of thing. So we'll be right back after this. This Nutrition Minute is brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products, the company that simplifies your search for research-proven nutritional supplements at kppusa.com. The horse that matters to you matters to Kentucky Performance Products. Managing horses can be challenging. Each horse's personality affects the way he behaves and reacts to the world around him. Horses with certain dispositions can be at higher risk for developing health problems than others. High-strung or excitable horses are easily stressed, but so is the timid, quiet warrior. Stressed horses are more likely to develop digestive upsets that lead to colic, diarrhea, and ulcers. Nalox Advanced was specifically developed to support a digestive tract that is under stress. It sustains proper pH levels, reducing the incidence of ulcers and hindgut imbalances, while simultaneously supporting the healing of damaged tissue. Nalox Advanced supports the complete digestion of starches and sugars and sustains populations of beneficial bacteria. Make life a little easier on your sensitive horse and start him on Nalox Advanced today. To learn more about the ingredients in Nalox Advanced, visit Kentucky Performance Products at kppusa.com. 
So we're back. We're talking about Western Dressage and our new episode that's going to happen once a month here on the Dressage Radio Show. And we're with Tim and Karen, who are going to be your hosts of the, dressage, uh, of the new Dressage or Radio, Western Dressage Radio Show once a month. So, Karen, we all know, obviously, listening to this show, they're all dressage people. So they know what a dressage test is. They know how all that works. What's the differences between the English and the Western Dressage? Does it run the same way, just different patterns? How does it work? Um, the difference really is we want to preserve the tradition of the stock horse breeds. So when you look at form to function, your stock horse breeds were bred for a different purpose. They're bred for ranch work. They're bred to go out and, and have a job. And the gates are a little bit different. We want to preserve the walk jog lope. So the tempo is a little bit slower. We don't want that big, fancy, huge moving horse that you'll see. Um, you know, it's not totalist in a Western saddle. Right. Right. And that's a thing for people to wrap their their head around. And uh, even the judges that are going out and now uh, working at the schooling shows and the rated shows and judging the Western dressage, you know, it, it there is some differences. It's 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 a little bit um, the emphasis is on rideability and harmony. No sliding stops or spins. No, okay. not yet. Not yet. Not on well, purpose. Well, sometimes. Not on yeah, purpose. Not Although I do have to say, you know, I, I ride um, some of Tim's clients' horses in traditional dressage, and the first time I got on one of the mares, they have a the one mare had a spur stop, and I did yeah. not know that. And I hit the windshield and almost crashed <laughs> over the front of the horse because you know spur means go in my world. And I'm having to learn a little bit of a different language. It's been quite an education. So you may see some spins and some sliding <laughs> stops. They're just not on purpose. They're not intentional. <laughs> so what kind of movements would be in each level? Like what, what kind of things are At, at you? intro, you're just walk dog. It's mm -hmm. an introduce, uh, introduction for the rider to the geometry of the arena. Uh -huh. So 20 meter circles and straight center lines yeah. and diagonal lines. And then when you get into basic level, we introduce the lope. So we expect you to do walk, jog, and lope. Yeah. Lope is canner for you English people. Uh, we need a little, I should put out a glossary of terms here. Right. And then in level one, which is similar to our first level traditional dressage, you're going to introduce some lateral movements, mm -hmm. like yield, turn on the forehand, turn on the haunches. Yeah. Level two, think second level, shoulder in, haunches in, simple changes, oh, so great. which is changes of lead yeah. through the walk. Yeah. And level three right now is as high as the published tests are. Mm -hmm. And there's one of the big differences between traditional and Western is in third level traditional, you have flying changes. They have mm -hmm. not yet been introduced in level three Western dressage. Um, uh -huh. But you do have half pass. Oh, really? Um, and I guess I should say, too, that one of the big differences between Western and traditional dressage is in the balance of the horse. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get up into the upper levels of traditional dressage, you're looking for an uphill balance and you get the medium and the extended gates, which are, you know, freedom in the shoulder mm -hmm. and really sitting behind. Uh, we never ask. Well, as of right now, they do not appear in any of the Western dressage tests. We're okay with more of a level balance, a lengthened stride, but they don't have to sit as much behind. Um, so in a nutshell, yeah. that's... And what about the, bits? What, like, that's such a big thing for dressage, right? You know, our different bits. And you're, the Western bits are so different. So tell us about that. You know, it's going to be pretty much snaffle bits. I mm -hmm. like to ride in the snaffle bits, particularly taking a lot of my seasoned well-trained show horses. Right. I had to put them back in a snaffle bit, let them... From, from the long shanks. Yeah, bit. from the long shanks, the big yeah. show bits on a full drape of rain, you right. know, listening to your legs and your spurs. So I put all mine back into snaffle bits yeah. and had to teach them to go to the bridle, yeah. and it was okay to elevate more than what they'd been used to. Right. But I call that repurposing, and it probably took me about six months to repurpose oh, my really? horses. But as I have gone through the books and, and see everything that's out there... You're going to be pretty much in any any snaffle bit that would be in an AQH or a pink mm -hmm. um, approved their rule no books. No Kimberwicks, though. No, no Kimberwicks. English. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. But no you can English use a bits. shank western bit. Yes, yes. and curbs. Now, there's um, a proposed rule change that yeah. they may require just snaffle only in the lower oh, levels. Wow. Um, but that has not yet. That's a, that's a big sticking point because yeah. a lot of the western riders, you know, 
They don't want to show without their curb bits. Yeah. So, you know. And, you know, I think the, the broken ones. And I think most people are going to find mm-hmm. that as you want to get the connection yeah. and reconnect with your horse and you're going to want to have that contact, it's going to be easier right. to do it in a lighter bit than what we were used to showing in. Yeah. So I um, get asked that question a lot, what about the bits? And I don't think the bits is going to be a big issue for yeah. most people. And you can also ride Western in a bitless bridle. Yeah, I think that's no. a really great option because there's so many people that want to show bitless, but you can't do that mm-hmm. USDF. Yeah, and so you this can is a do great option. Hackamore, you can do a Bozell. Mm-hmm. Um, I, there's like a 25 page listing of yeah. approved tack and yeah. equipment. Yeah. Well, and no. everything that's not approved or illegal in the breeds is definitely illegal. In oh, the okay. Western dressage. Okay. No corkscrew. Um, you know, no. another no question bicycle that. Chain. <laughs> no, bicycle yeah. no, 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 no. Another question that I get frequently is can I ride two hands or one hand? Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a good question. And, no uh, hands. Yeah. No hands. <laughs> um, two hand. I write everything two hand because what you're going to do is, is you get into this and learn yeah. and learn about the movements because a lot of people are looking at the test and they go, oh, that's a horsemanship pattern. Oh, that's right. an equitation pattern. Um, yeah, but no, not really. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot more to yeah, it. No. You know, you learn about fallout. You don't want your horse to fall out in the, in the circles and that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And to get a good connection with a good bend is mm-hmm. you really need to have two hands for me. And okay. I think that's going to really find most people are going to find yeah. that is. I apologize to all the rainers, but I'm so glad that dorky hand that they're holding up. It just looks stupid. What's I'm, that, well, you know, Glenn, hand? we always say that. I what do just, I do with my, uh, what do I do with my extra hand? You know, if you're in pleasure, you put <laughs> you it down text. by your side. You could be if you're in horsemanship, you know, you bring it up and yeah, the extra hand. Thank you God that it's we have two dorky. hands, but yeah, that spare hand in, in the show world is always, yeah, it's always just, kind it just of, looks like you should do something with it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, here's, a weird thing that I didn't know until I started working with you is in a lot of the Western classes, you're not allowed to touch your horse. Like you can pet your horse with that spare hand. Yeah, no, you don't do that. And in no, raining, that's yeah. why they hold it up, yes. right? Because they're yeah. not allowed to touch anything, yeah. really. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 yeah and there's even when you get into the individual tests, there's usually penalties and there's mm-hmm. penalties if you know if you touch your horse. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So yeah. And it's very easy to do. And that's why the extra hand, you know, from from when when people are judging, um, if you carry your hand up in an awkward position, it can almost give the emphasis that they are two-handing. Right. You know, so, yeah. So, and back into the Western dressage, I have just found it really helpful to use the two hands Mm -hmm. and to go forward. And I did see, I saw people using one and two, both Mm -hmm. at that show. And I saw English saddles too. Are they permitted? Well, actually you were at Lynn's place and I used to uh, be the show secretary up there and we have English classes at that show too. Okay. That's why I saw those. So yeah. Yeah. That's So what are the requirements for a saddle for Western dressage? Any, any Western um, stock saddle, Mm -hmm. any Australian saddle, you can do Vaquero. Or endurance, um, you can do an endurance. Endur- yep, but they have to have the fenders. Must have Western style, fenders. and it can be an Australian. And, yeah, yeah, it yep. can be, and with or like, without a horn. And yep. to come to Glenn's point, I Glenn, I also seen a lot of these new Western saddles that I thought were English saddles. Yeah, they, they're oh, some form of a dressage saddle. I'm like, how can that be? And yeah. well, it's so you know, it's they're much more cut down. They're oh, less yeah, bulky. Yeah, they're trimmed. Yeah. So from you know, from Tim's perspective. He had to learn that there's a there was a whole lot of Western right. out there in the world mm-hmm. that was beyond the AQHA and the paint horse mm-hmm. world. So I mean, a good um, it wouldn't have been fun to see it all too. Yeah, I mean, it's it's good because whatever you have in your tack room, you can go out and show, and you don't have to go buy a really expensive, yeah. you know, silver blinged out saddle. You can take your trail saddle and go show. Yeah. Who, who? What's the governing body though of the? Western Dressage Association yep. of America okay. is an affiliate of the United States Equestrian Federation. And it's recognized now by the Federation. It is. Okay. It is. Um, and it kind of depends on And that how... was only recently, right? A couple of years? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it just depends on how into it you want to get. I mean, if you don't want to get all these memberships, you can get your feet wet just by going to a local show. And then you don't have to join the different networks but then as you get into actually competitive showing yeah you want it there's huge resources lots of information on their websites and what is the website for the association itself western dressage association of america.org that's a long one yeah (laughs) just google it yeah Yeah, google it (laughs) google and uh tim and i are very active in the western dressage association of florida we're board members um so each are there local associations now in almost Almost All, every everywhere. state. I'd yeah, it's growing. Yeah, it, it's growing. 
And that's one of the things that I've seen just looking at it from the outside is that the growth of it, you're just seeing so much about it now that we didn't see two years ago. It I think really it's has taken it appeals off. to so many different people because it's so inclusive. And, and it's in different countries. I mean, I was asked to do a clinic up in Canada. Um, it's in Australia now. Uh, it's big in Europe. I mean, it's really taking mm-hmm. off. People are loving it. Yeah. Um, just because it's something fun they can do. And it's just you and your horse. You get right. in that ring. You don't have to compete against anybody else. It's you know, and report tell us, card of your progress. Tell us about the collectives. Are the collectives different f- from for Western than for USDF dressage? A little bit. There's a bigger emphasis on harmony again mm-hmm. because Western dressage is really about rideability. Yeah. Um, so we look a lot at you know the harmony, the ease, the, mm-hmm. the you know how fluid the performance, how looks they go like. together, the mm-hmm. people and the you know. The horse. Um, you know, it's not, again, it's not about big flashy gates. It's about how the partnership, we mm-hmm. really emphasize, emphasize the partnership between horse and rider. Wouldn't it be wonderful if your horse could enjoy a zone of repellency from pesky flies? Well, he can with EcoVet. EcoVet is an entirely new type of fly repellent that is safe for horses and those applying it, offering a real alternative to toxic pesticides like pyrethrins. EcoVet confuses an insect's normal directional ability, the bug's GPS, if you will. So if it can't locate your horse, it can't bite your horse. Dr. Wendy Ying from the Driving Radio Show has been using it in South Florida, also known as the Jurassic Park of biting insects, and she just loves it. EcoVet's active ingredients are naturally occurring food-grade fatty acids that have been clinically shown to improve the condition of horses with difficult-to-treat sweet itch problems. EcoVet is effective on mosquitoes, ticks, noceums, as well as flies. You can visit EcoVet online at eco-vet.com for more information or to order. You can find EcoVet at Dover Saddlery Stores and EcoVets on Facebook. Just search EcoVet, E-C-O-V-E-T. And um, so you, your business at home, you specialize in like English, we'll say dressage, USDF dressage, and you come from the Western world. So how do you think that helps with you guys working together for the same client? Well, Karen brings, you know, a strong, her, the traditional backside of the background mm-hmm. over. Plus, Karen is also a judge. Mm-hmm. So she is really in tune to the scoring and the emphasis yeah. and what the movements are. I come back from a heavy training background and coaching yeah. background. On the quarter horse side. On the quarter horse paint. side, yeah. yeah. Mainly quarter horses have dabbled in some paints over the years, but, but primarily um, quarter horses is where I come from. Um, so you bring that, that whole group in together. Mm-hmm. Um, our horses are typically broke. Mm-hmm. Um, That's good. And we've just have, we just <laughs> have merged so well, you know, um, and bringing the client base. And also as I've come over, more and more people from the show world who've just shown for years and they're kind of ready to move on, but they're not ready to be done riding. And, right. Mm-hmm. And once you've competed, as we talked earlier, Wendy, mm-hmm. about you know competition, people still like an element of competition. Right. Um, and so that has been very, very attracting to a lot of the people who used to show. And yeah. that's where I have a lot of people I'm being connect- contacted yeah. by a lot of past show people. Right. What is this? Can I come to a clinic? Can I come, you yeah. know, come try it out? So, I, and I think the way it's structured with the difference of, you know, the different levels and the different tests is it's very progressive. Uh-huh. So it gives somebody, it's easy to set your goals. You know, you can go out and you can, you, you've got a little bit of a game plan and you've got uh, some strategies that you can work with, with your horse and you can go out and show and you can get this, this dressage test and every movement's got a score of right. one through 10. And then you can build upon that and you can see where you need to kind of strengthen your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And then you can go out and show again and see, have you improved at all? And you're only competing against yourself. Yeah, that is nice. Technically, but you do get pinned in a class. So you get the opportunity to get some pretty ribbons and some prizes. So if you're into all that... Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of keeps you motivated and going. But boy, did it take me a long time to get used to and accustomed to the score. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, because he's the like... score. I remember you. You're like, oh... I got a seven. Do they write nasty Is little that, comments on the it's sheets? Not no, 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 no. no, no. I'm like, Tim, you're not going to get a hundred. Okay, get <laughs> that not. out of your head. You cannot get a hundred. Yes. But I have now, you know. Charlotte still hasn't gotten a hundred. So yeah, I, mean, I know. Yeah, yeah. But now doing this a year and a half, I've really grown to learn and to understand right. the score because it is about the score. And, you know, in, lots, in the Western Dressage, we turn our scores into for the state level to get, you know, points for the year end awards. Um, so you don't have to go out and show against multitudes of people to get lots of points. And even though we're dabbling in the traditional side here in the AQHA portion of the dressage through the USDF and USDF, mm-hmm. the scores are converted to points. Right. But, but if you are listening to this and you are from that real competitive show world, it is an adjustment. <laughs> <laughs> Used to the score versus the win. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, let's take a break for another commercial. We'll be right back. We're going to talk a little bit more about Western dressage coming up. Well, Total Saddle Fit has the cinch that you've been looking for for your Western dressage saddle. The shoulder relief cinch actually changes the position and angle of the billets to prevent the saddle tree from interfering with the shoulder. The center of the cinch is set forward to sit in the horse's natural girth groove, while the sides of the cinch are cut back to meet the billets two inches behind where the horse's natural girth groove lies. This brings the latigos from angling forward to becoming perpendicular to the ground, which reduces the saddle's tendency to be pulled forward into the shoulders. With horses that have shoulder interference without angled billets, it simply moves the billets back to keep the saddle further away from the shoulders. The secondary benefit to this shape is the cutback at the elbows. This gives more room for elbow movement as well and prevents galls in the elbow area. You can find the shoulder relief cinch at totalsaddlefit.com. That's totalsaddlefit.com. Well, as we said earlier in the show, I'm here with Dr. Wendy Ying of the Driving Radio Show, who's done some dressage in her day. She's just been in the carriage. And, and ridden dressage, though. A little you, bit. Yeah, you've done some ridden dressage. You were a guest on the show here before with Reese and Phillip, I think, mm-hmm, yeah. in the past. You've been I, on almost I've, every show, I think. I think we talked about it because um, I had this one bratty one who's my favorite one, Duke. And he pulls like a freight train. And our advanced, our FEI level test, you enter and you... Ha- well, no, your, your last movement, you come down center line, and our dressage arena is 100 meters. And you have to go, like, a 90-meter extended trot to G and halt, <laughs> right? And I'm, I mean, my arms are only so strong, and this horse pulls like a freight train. So I was like, I'm going to do something, because I almost hit the judge. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Has ever hit the judge? <laughs> no, I I've, that I've come the closest. But I started riding dressage. They don't like that much either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I started riding dressage, because I thought, well, maybe I just need more time coming down center line. So I just started showing him, and it didn't With a carriage, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, with a carriage. carriage. So no, okay. no brakes, and I had a yeah. two-wheel carriage with no brakes. Like okay. a four-wheel carriage, at least I could have, like, skidded down from <laughs> X to G, you know, dragging the carriage. But I was in a two-wheel carriage, and I was just trying to halt and look pretty. I had, had a, I had a rainer that I coach. And he did his fir- one of his first dressage shows, mm-hmm. and I forgot to tell him, you know, leave the ring on a loose rein. Oh, yeah. Well, I did actually tell him that, because he did that technically, but he spun and, and galloped, and galloped <laughs> out of the oh, yeah. ring and did a sliding stop at A. Waving his camera. Oh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> uh, don't do that. <laughs> well, now let's uh, talk uh, a little bit about what you guys hope to accomplish with the show here. We want to grow interest in the sport. You know, we want to be here to answer questions. We want to educate. Um, we want to be a resource for everyone. You know, all things Western dressage. Is know. there a world show yet or a, like a national show? Oh, yes, there is. Um, and I believe this is going to be the fourth year. Um, okay. This is, I believe, a September 29th through October 2nd. Yeah, and I that will be book my plane um, in Guthrie, Oklahoma. It's always in Oklahoma. That's kind Everything of Western of, is in Oklahoma. It's right in the <laughs> yeah. center of yes, the country. You that, yeah, huh? I did. Yeah. It's all in Oklahoma. Yeah. We went out last year and it was held in Tulsa and it was a ball. 
Um, it's a different lot, place this year. Uh, it's yeah. going to be in Guthrie, Oklahoma, at the Lazy okay. Arena. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. There will be a standalone show. I believe it will be the first year for the Western Dressage Association to be a standalone well, how many show. How many were there last year? Because it grew over like, six hundred. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. And what was it part of before? Uh, it was part of the Pinto. The Pinto. Yeah, okay. yeah. The Pinto Congress. It ran just prior to be- before the Pinto Congress started, and they had a relationship with that group. That must be a colorful show, the Pinto Congress. Yeah, I believe it was. <laughs> but we were moving out when they were getting started. Okay. So, but you know, but people come a lot. There's a, a lot of Canadians, yeah. um, folks from the East Coast or in the West Coast. That's a hike and, for the Canadians. Yeah. Wow. That's a yeah. drive. They had a good showing. They had a good turnout. So, you know, and I think the other thing as we go into and talk about is the enthusiasm. You know, I hope people really catch the enthusiasm mm-hmm. through the show that we have for this new discipline. Mm-hmm. Um, because there's not a whole lot of new disciplines that come out right. in, in a very conservative, traditional mm-hmm. world of, of horse riding. You know riding. what's next, guys? What? Western eventing. <laughs> so, it'll be, oh. so what can we do with the next two? We got Western dressage covered. Yeah. So what's cross country? Do, do we the like Cra- the Craig Cameron like extreme? Yes, like yes, extreme yes, cowboy, yes, yes. Yeah. And then, uh, a, and then, then maybe there's some cows in there that you have to yeah, like rustle around cutting, and yeah. Cutting. What do you do for stadium then? Cut, cut. We could cut. You could cut yeah. for stadium. Yeah, yes. We, could. <gasps> wow. we need to start this. We invented it. You shouldn't have oh. said it. I should. Wait a minute. I gotta get a patent quick. Can you cut this out of the show? I need to get a patent quick. <laughs> hey, I have a question about the world uh, about the world championship show. Uh, Do you have to qualify for that? At this point, no, it's not a, a, a pre qualifying show, mm-hmm. so it's kind of open to uh-huh. to members. You obviously have to right. be a member of the national association, and they really drive you to be a member of uh-huh. the local association as well. So, but in the future, there'll probably be qualifying shows leading up to as that. we get more and more people. I would, I would say, assume. you know, yeah. I've heard that, but you yeah. know. But yeah, we'll like exciting. Now you can just like sign up and go. You can be a world champion <laughs> yeah, in your backyard. You <laughs> and you can be a world champion at intro. Oh, yeah. So that would be perfect walk for jog. you, Wendy. Yeah, yeah because I could be that walk, one, jog, walk jog. The one, we'll the the, my driving down. horse that drags me down the center line. Yeah. There's the no rocking. The trotting is scary enough. Is there a stop, you know? though? If he's a stop, you're in trouble. No, he likes to stop, but it's just the cannery. He doesn't like to start again, though, sometimes. There's a lot of bucking. Cross cannering is bucking allowed, or is it? Uh, bucking, well, I bucking is not indoors. You know, <laughs> it doesn't get you, you a get ten if you're bucking. Yeah, no, 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 you don't get extra rider points for staying, <laughs> for staying on. on. It's not like rodeo. Yeah, no, 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 no. no, no. Oh, okay. But um, you don't get eliminated. Maybe that's the fourth phase in Western eventing. Oh yeah, rodeo. Yeah, oh, a little rodeo, a little bu- you yeah. know, a little uh, bronc riding in there. Yeah, I don't know. that mm-hmm. that seems. Even crazier Extreme. than regular <laughs> eventing. I didn't think there was we'll any that easier for the next regular generation, Glenn, yeah. okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, but uh, you were talking about qualifying, mm-hmm. and uh, Florida last year had the very first state championship show. Oh, great. Yeah, so I'm thinking as, you know, as the state affiliates mm-hmm. grow, they might... Do we know what the membership's like uh, countrywide? Ooh, we could mm-hmm. look that up. That, yeah, that yeah. might be a question for the next show. Well, good. Well, we're well. Let's let's talk about the next show. Then we're so glad that you guys are coming aboard. I've been wanting to do something like this, and Wendy said I have the perfect people to do it. So, uh, we really appreciate you doing it. What's your websites? Where can people find you? Do you have websites? I do. Uh, really creative name: KarenAbatistaDressage dot com. The only tricky part is spelling my last yes, name. Yes, yes. I still have trouble with it. I, I have to let it do. autocorrect. We'll put it in the show notes to make it easy for there's people to find. There's too many B's, and yes. I can't remember if there's two T's, and I am not a good Speller. Yeah. <laughs> you can just Google it and it'll come up. And we'll put it in the show notes too. We'll put yeah. it on Facebook on our Dressage Radio show and then page. Trainingforlife.com. Yeah, Training for Life, but F O U R is the four. Um, the number four? Yep. Yeah, no, oh, F-O-U-R. spell it out. Yep. Okay. Trainingforlife.com is my website for my business. And then we also have, Karen and I also do, I put on the Sunshine Classic, which is a local show down in Sarasota, Florida. And then on we added a dressage section to it this past year, which Karen helps me with, and that would be the sunshineclassic.com. Okay. And Tim, tell us a little bit about your training for life philosophy, because I really like that. I think oh, the training for life philosophy came back, oh, several years ago I came mm-hmm. up with that. And we had been interviewed by a national publication. Mm-hmm. On, we had a couple of very successful quarter horses, one stallion, and, and yeah. my parents and I, our family owns the all-time leading Western pleasure horse in AQHA history. Mm-hmm. He's just too sharp. Um, was a world was champion. Was that his name? He's just yeah, too he's sharp. He's just too sharp. Um, <laughs> I like that. And I had a stud who was, they were maternal brothers. And their mother was a mare called Pale Face Doll, who 
had won the Junior Western Pleasure. The Western have the best names for horses. They're better than yeah. English. And but what we found had happened is they had done an article. Um, they were looking at horses who were older horses and where are they now type thing. And they had contacted us on uh, one, I think it was the He's Just Too Sharp horse. And what was he doing now? Well, they were still showing. And then the question started going on about, well, you know, well, these horses have lasted so long. And we really began to realize that a lot of the horses that my parents and I raised and broke out and started and, and shown uh -huh were lasting well into their late teens. So that's yeah. not usual for the Western? Uh, you know, the Western world went through a big phase where it was the all-around world, and it got very individualized, and then it was very young horse Well, because you guys promoted. do the maturities. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's, actually, the maturities. it's actually one of the complaints on the reigning yeah. side is that they're done by the time they're seven. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, you know, as you look back now, that's coming back. So now, you know, everything always goes full circle, and so now... These folks have got older horses for the all-arounds, and they're not yeah. willing to part with them because it takes a long time to put all the different events right. on them. Mm -hmm. But what we begin to realize is that all these horses that, we'd co that we had shown, that showed well into their late teens, all had the same basic foundation. Mm -hmm. We broke them out. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of where this philosophy came from, mm -hmm. is that they mentally lasted and they physically lasted. Mm -hmm. And I really began to look at, well, you know, what did I do? And, and I came up with, you know, the, a solid foundation as a young horse. Um, some of them we showed as two. Some of them didn't, weren't ready to show it to. Right. And then I really began to realize, too, that not every horse fits every training program. And sometimes you have to look at the horse individually. Mm -hmm. So I began and to I realize assume that extends to competition schedule. Not every horse does. can it, do the same competition yes, schedule. You are right. correct. And so I really began to realize that every time you got on a horse is an opportunity. So that's where I came up with foundation and opportunity. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, you know, is very, that I felt was very clear is, is they had to understand what we were asking them to do. Uh -huh. And in a lot of disciplines, not just the Western world, but in a lot of disciplines, the horses really are not understanding right. what we're trying to communicate. Yeah, to them. looking around the warm-up oh, yeah. arena here, just you can see it. Oh yeah, and sometimes like, you know, I, don't get it, Mom. I always like to say I heard this once. Um, I think it was Sandy Vaughn, who was a, 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 a trainer in the quarter horse world, who has just excelled in the hunter jumpers portion. She'd always said, "Don't lie to your horse," and <laughs> you'd like look that. at her and she, and she'd say, "Well, you're thinking you're telling your horse to do this, but you're really asking him with your body to do something else." So that's where, you know, sounds once like again, she so from I've George adopted Morris, that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a George <laughs> Morris statement. But, you know, so I've, I've adopted that and plugged it into the understanding because they have to understand what we want. Yeah. And then the, the response and reward, you know, respond positively to your horse, reward your horse for, for a job well done. And I always say response over react. You know, mm -hmm. let's respond, let's not react. So that's really kind of where it came up from. Yeah, and, yeah. and Tim and I have been really compatible because, I mean, one of the things that we work with is, you know, are they physically capable of doing it? Mm -hmm. You know, if, if your horse says no, right. is he physically capable of it? Mm -hmm. Does he understand the request? Right. And then if both of those things you're pretty sure are yeses, then, okay, then you get into the attitude portion right. of it. Um, but so many people are quick to jump to, oh, he just doesn't want to do it. Right. right. Yeah. And, and they don't think that way. No, I mean, horses don't. I sometimes say that they're doing that, but I know that they don't really think, oh, I don't want to do this today. Well, Except well, for Duke. Except they for do. Duke. Yeah. Duke does. <laughs> but, you know, and, unless he's but, your but, horse. But when he but, was a baby, when he was a baby, he did have some soundish issues that but, I was dealing with. Try so owning a hackney like, pony sometimes. But, yeah. <laughs> but when you bring up a really good point there, though, and, and I have said that lots of times with particularly amateur owners, mm -hmm. um, these horses, we want them to go out and to turn in a stellar performance mm -hmm. every day, whether it's in my backyard, right. whether it's at the horse show. Um, and I'll have people over the years who have taken lessons and things are going wrong. And I'll say, tell me about your last ride. Well, it was a disaster to what was going on. Yeah. Oh, you know what? They had a bad day at work or it was a really nice right. day. And they're wanting to race home and get on their horse and ride. And the horse has been out lollygagging outside right. in the pasture <laughs> thinking, you know, that what a lovely day it is. <laughs> I'm so glad they're not here to ride. And they're on a completely different thought pattern That's than true. you are. And while I hear you come and you want him to be perfect. Yeah. And he wasn't even wanting you to come home to that day. Right. So, <laughs> right. That's true. So, you know, that's where we kind of understand and, you know, and, and, and I always say that too, have a game plan. Yeah. You know, understand and have, you know, have that opportunity. What are you going to accomplish today? Right. And also, if you get home and your horse maybe isn't 
given a hundred percent. Yeah, you have to be a yeah. Say, you know what? Rides. Maybe I'm just going to accept eighty percent today, right. mm-hmm. or just trail so, ride today. Yeah. Yeah. Something fun. So. You just trail ride every day. I, well, I'm retired. I, I mean, come on. I'm retired now. <laughs> That's what we do. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. I'm looking forward to having you on. As we said, it'll be the last week of every month in the Dressage Radio Show for all of the Western uh, peep folks that are tuning in for the first time to the Dressage Radio Show. You can listen to it a number of different ways. You can listen on your computer. Just go to dressageradio.com. The best way to listen now is on our app. It's free. Go to iOS or Android in the App Store, whether on your phone or any of your tablets, and just search for Horse Radio Network. Download it there, and all 10 of the shows on the Horse Radio Network are there. Yep, we have 10 different shows. Wendy is host of the Driving Radio Show, and about half the people that listen to that don't drive at all. They just like the fun we have over there. Because it's ridiculous. We have ridiculous <laughs> stories. Of the, if you want to feel better about your riding Guess what we have coming up? You should listen to the Driving Radio this Show. This week on the Driving Radio Show, Wendy doesn't even know this, um, we have a gentleman who is a Western trainer, uh, and Sean Patrick, who's out of Florida here. I don't know oh. if you know Sean. He lives over near Daytona, but he grew up in really the upper parts of Canada. And th- the only driving experience he had growing up was with the dogs. I was going to so, say the that. sled dogs. Sled dogs. No. So he's going to come on and tell us what it was like growing was up fun. with sled dogs and the lots of the stories he go, has Wendy. about yeah, that. Yeah, we love so, that. Different so that's uh, we 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 try and cover. We've doing dr- driving chickens, driving goats. You can't drive chickens. Oh yes, there's lots of pictures on the internet of people <laughs> driving chickens. No way. Yeah. Yes, yes, driving um, goats, goats. That girl. Dogs. Uh, well, um, you know. Uh, if it's regular, on the internet, it Harry must be true. Dave, yeah, yeah, exactly. Regular dogs, like the one dog pulling a little cart. I mean, it's mm-hmm. all kinds of things out there. So we c- try and cover it all in the drive. And plus, I want to get that guy. Remember, there's a picture on the internet about this guy driving a hippo. Oh yes, yes, yes. We've we had the water that. buffalo guy on. The people who drive water oh. buffaloes and yaks. Yeah, and yaks. Yeah, there's all kinds of driving things. <laughs> If, if you can drive it, you will. That's right. And Wendy is a veterinarian, so she does a health tip every mm-hmm. week that people seem to enjoy. Yeah. Uh, Chinese medicine, usually. We yeah. get into some of the... We got to replay the five elements at some point because... Oh, yeah. Because that that's really so important in personality wise. We were actually have a friend that we were talking about the five elements with, with her horse because she's in a toxic relationship with her horse. Yep. And but it happens. Yeah. Like poor Helena. Yeah, poor Helena That's had how the wrong I met horse. you guys. Yeah, one of the hosts on the Horse Radio Network. She was with the wrong horse, and Wendy's the one that talked to her <laughs> out. Of, that horse got sold shortly after that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thank uh, you. You Reese and Philip will be back next week to talk some English dressage wow. here on the Dressage Radio Show. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Thank you.